Greetings, dear friends! I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Mercedes-Benz CLS. A real Mercedes should be a rear-wheel drive, and all-wheel drive is a superfluity, so apparently the creators of the CLS reasoned so it doesn't have a 4-matic version. Like cars with manual gearbox, this is not an E-class, where you need to think about the needs of taxi drivers. The mechanical part of the Mercedes transmission is traditionally excellent. The rear gearbox requires minimal attention. Just check periodically for oil misting. But even with powerful V8s, it is in general eternal, even the compressor motor will not turn it down during normal operation. Unless frequent quarter-mile races and drifts can finish it off. But the gearbox suspension will have to be monitored. The more powerful the motor and, and the more temperamental the driver, the lower its resource. Gearboxes here are mainly 7-speed 722.9 in different versions. On the previous styling AMG versions with the compressor 5.4, there was a 5-speed 722.643, because the newer box did not have versions for such a large torque at that time. But then the engine was changed to 7 to 6.2 and the gearbox to a 7-speed robot speed shift based on the same 722.9 in versions 722.907 and 722.930, where the torque converter was changed to a wet friction clutch. The 722.9 series, the latest 7-speed transmission, was an outstanding design in terms of vehicle dynamics and fuel consumption. New kinematics, low operating pressure, minimal internal losses, blocking of the gas turbine engine starting from the first gear, combining control electronics and control hydraulics. Unfortunately, the design at the time of the release of C219 was still frankly raw. The operating temperature of the oil in the automatic transmission turned out to be clearly higher than the calculated one, and the speed sensors on the mechatronic board often fail from overheating. In addition, vibrations and an unsuccessful design of the pump bearing in the early years broke the bell of the box body. In the process of fine-tuning, the mechatronics were revised several times to increase its strength and durability. The design of the mechanical part was finalized, the design of the planetary gears was changed to reduce the wear of the landing surfaces of the satellites, the reliability of the ICM ISM servo drive was improved and a thousand smaller changes were made. Unfortunately, the early boxes as part of the repairs didn't receive changes in full, unless the units were completely changed under warranty. The bulk of the car produced before 2008 is an openly risky option, the resource of the automatic transmission remains small and the list of changes made to the unit is already a mystery. Later boxes are also not a panacea, but there will definitely be fewer problems. Mechanical part of this series of automatic transmissions is quite reliable, in any case it holds the V8 torque very well. With runs over 200,000, there are usually problems associated with wear of the planetary gear washers and, th and thrust surfaces in the planetary gear housings. You need to understand that any breakdown of the roller bearings can kill the box instantly if the dropped roller rollers fall into the planetary gear. The plant initially stated that the oil was filled for the entire service life of the unit. Now it is recommended to replace it once. Nevertheless. The liner of the gas turbine engine supplies wear products with enviable regularity, but even with a replacement interval of 60,000 times, the wear of the solenoids and the oil pump is very intense. The box requires a strong reduction and at the same time much more serious cooling. An external radiator and an oil change every 30-40,000 is a good way out. The separator plate of the oil pump is also aging. The coating peels off and the pressure in this zone and vibrations are very strong. The connection of the bell and the box body is loaded by the transmission torque, which causes a pressure drop in the most important components of the automatic transmission. In addition to these factors, very early wear of the linings of the gas turbine engine is also superimposed, superimposed, which is associated with a large load on it. Now on sale there are complete electronic mechatronics boards, separate speed sensors and solenoids, which makes it possible to relatively inexpensively solve box problems at the initial stage. The problem, as always, is in good specialist. Prevention of malfunctions is an unprofitable business for box services, it is more profitable for them to sort out corpses, earning a markup for parts in relatively simple manipulations, remove, put everything in a row except for these cases. In this case, the budget for overhaul can be 300,000. Speculations on the cost of an oil change is also very popular. Despite the presence of a drain plug in the gas turbine engine, it is practiced to replace the oil with a double volume of flushing at the hydraulic unit. Clarify the replacement technique. 
This will be a good test if the wizard is adequate or not very good. It's not so interesting to talk about 722.6. The mechanics of the older version of this box on the C219 is very reliable. This is the older version of the automatic transmission. The classic well body is also noticeably more reliable than that of the air, although there are problems with wear of the gas turbine blocking, solenoid and line pressure with runs of 150 to 100 thousand, but even in the absence of all changes during operation, the box often withstands the barbarism. The wear of the linings of the gas turbine engine after 200 to 150 thousand kilometers is quite typical, sometimes it withstands longer, but in the case of a 5.4 compressor motor, replacement is likely to be required much earlier. About the M113 V8 engine series, which is represented by the M113 E50 and M113 E55 AMG variants, in general suffice it to say that they are as reliable as possible. Natural wear and tear with runs for 300-400 thousand can be practically absent. This is the second generation of Mercedes all-aluminum motors and it did a great job. Here aluminum blocks with a non-replaceable locker seal sleeves are about the same as Alusil, but the sleeve material has a higher silicon content and a slightly higher hardness, while the Alusil block is entirely cast from such an alloy and the cylinder in it is simply turned and processed to form a surface layer of aluminum carbide. The motors have three valves per cylinder and very compact single shaft cylinder heads. The timing drive is a powerful roller chain, there are no phase regulators, and in general the motors are surprisingly simple and efficient at the same time. If there were no overheating, the air filters were changed on time, the dirt was not poured out and the intake during maintenance, the EGR valve was muffled or it is serviceable, the intake manifold didn't wear out to the hose and the catalysts were replaced or cut out in time, then all its breakdowns are oil leaks from heat exchanger gaskets, aging of oil seals and gaskets and contamination of the ventilation system. These motors always have small oil consumption, this is due to the low preload of the piston rings, but when replacing it every 10,000, no more than a liter or two has to be added for a working engine. Even the 5.4 liter compressor version works perfectly and doesn't require any, any special maintenance. However, if you want to, you can still break the M113. Killed catalyst, pouring injectors and a faulty thermostat are the main risk factors. In the most advanced cases, scuffs on the cylinder walls are possible, after which the extremely expensive block must either be sleeved or replaced with a new one. The slightly more common V6 of the M272 series and the rather rare V8 of the relatively new at the time M273 series are structurally extremely similar to each other. The 8 hasn't only two more cylinders, but instead of the balance shaft in the collapse of the block, there is a simply a timing gear. The rest is a complete constructive similarity. Early versions of the motor were famous for the extremely low resource of the timing chain. First of all, the bypass star wore out, or in the case of M272, the star of the balance shaft in the collapse of the block. It is corny due to the unsuccessful choice of material. But errors in the design of dampers and vibration also worn out the gears of the intake stars of the phase regulators, and they are expensive here, with an electromagnetic drive, and the circuit itself. For motors until 2006, it usually didn't go more than 60-80,000. Later versions had a chain resource of the order of 200,000, while the later ones had even more. But here the factor of the cost of work and materials is already beginning to affect. Only a set of 4 stars cost more than 120,000 troubles, and also a chain for 9,000 and almost certainly pacifiers. In this case, it is better to remove the V6 engine for replacement, because the balance shaft is mounted on the rear wall of the motor and it usually needs to be changed, since the bypass sprocket is part of it. As a result, the cost of work in spare parts is confidently kept at the level of 200,000 or more and is not inclined to fall. It is unlikely that you will encounter a motor with an original timing, but chances are due that there is an unoriginal chain there, and the stars are very worn out since the chains was changed by a brooch. When buying, it's better to remove one of the timing covers and make sure that the chain is original and the stars are not worn out or broken off. Now there are proposals to restore the stars of phase regulators, which two of three times reduce the cost of spare parts, but the quality is not guaranteed. However, the timing is something that is at least decided for sane money. It is much more annoying when the cylinders are lifted up. These motors almost always have minor seizures in the piston engine, but after one and a half or two to 200,000 mileage, the seizures become more voluminous, and due to the ingress of dust and carbon deposits, the chances of lightening up 
of lifting up the cylinders greatly increase. The slice overheating and no seizures are almost guaranteed. The sleeve of the V6 3.5 liter and V8 5.5 blocks is a rather complicated operation, it is not performed well everywhere. Block for a Lucille motor made of hypertactic aluminum alloy. It is quite fragile and an, un and an unsuccessful liner tension leads, leads either to cracks in the cooling jacket or to loosening of the liner and its subsidence. In any case, a liner and a new piston group are another 200,000 rubles, and it is also desirable to replace the dimy and the intake manifold or at least replace the tempers in it and check the pneumatic drives. Well, as a cherry on the cake, a few small problems like a slightly leaking thermostat and heat exchanger leaks. The irony is that the thermostat malfunction is more of a blessing, it reduces the operating temperature of the motor to a perfectly acceptable 19 degrees. In general, I can't say that these motors have Mercedes reliability. With some luck and good service, they are able to go through more than 200 300,000 before overhaul, but the chances of expensive breakdowns are very high up to these levels, and they are very expensive to repair. M156 6.3 motors on AMG at first glance are similar to the M273 series, although they pr practically have no common parts. Here everything is different. But in essence, the problems are the same, except that the load is higher, the catalysts are better, the temperatures are slightly lower, and even better assembly, lower mileage and a high level of service create the preconditions for a long and happy life. Diesel's OM642 against the background of M272 and M273 look great, although these engines are far from ideal. Here, there are not very successful injectors and an extremely actively polluting EGR valve with a current heat exchanger. Pieces of scale from the seams in the exhaust manifold sometimes fly into a widely expensive turbine, with a natural result. Inlet flaps break. There is a risk to lift up the crankshaft liners, since the oil supply channels are clogged up to 1000 of 200 mileage, and even a slight starvation is painful for the motor. On the whole, despite a whole bunch of probable problems, the diesel looks more interesting than modern V8 and is doubly more interesting than V6. Moreover, with excellent dynamics, fuel consumption is simply ridiculous. On this information about the problems of Mercedes-Benz CLS is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.